Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, greetings of peace. And we are very excited because we are welcoming the month of Ramadan. Islam is built on five pillars, and Ramadan is one of those. But the main pillar, you know what it is already if you've been tuning in, is to agree and accept what's in your very nature, that there's no God but God. There's only one God, and no buts, and zips after that. Leave it alone. Just God alone, worshiping Him and not His creation, and accepting all the messengers of God, including Jesus, Moses, Noah, and the last and final messenger sent to mankind, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. They all fasted, and we're fasting, and we are welcoming the month of Ramadan, and we're going to be talking about the benefits of it. What is Ramadan? What to avoid? What to do? And we're going to be right back to educate you here on the Dean Show. We'll be right back. Peace. Allah, there's only one God and Muhammad is his messenger Allah, la ilaha illallah Allah, there's only one God and Jesus was his messenger Allah, la ilaha illallah I don't know why I did that, maybe it's just, maybe it's just to break the ice Back here in the Dean Show studio, my good friend, Sheikh Dr. Mohammed Mahdou. How are you? Fine. Alhamdulillah. How about you? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Nice meeting you again. It's nice seeing you back again. Inshallah, Allah, the Creator gives us life. We'll Inshallah. have Ameen. many more of these visits. Amin. 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 Now, we're welcoming the month of Ramadan. Ramadan. It's here again. Just knocking at the door. Just right knocking now. at the door. A few more days and it's here. So it's people here. are excited and we're excited to have you here. Now, many of our viewers are non-Muslim. We know what it is, but they don't. And they think we're just starving ourselves. So why don't you explain a little bit what is okay. Ramadan? Okay. Uh, Ramadan is a month of fasting. It's month number nine in the uh, Islamic calendar. And it's, uh, as we know, that the Islamic calendar is between 29 and 30 days. And uh, as you know, that there are some pillars of, 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 of Islam. Uh, the first pillar, as you know, that you just mentioned it, uh, that you bear witness that there is no God except Almighty Allah, which is the proper name, the proper noun of God. Yes. And secondly, is doing the daily five prayers. And then uh, thirdly, is paying charities. And number four is fasting, fasting one month in the year. And when we say fasting, we mainly mean fasting from the little bit dawn time until the time of the sunset, which is approximately 12 hours in most of the countries. But in some areas, it may extend longer than this because the day is longer, particularly in summer. Mainly, the Muslims are uh, abstaining themselves from uh, the eating and drinking and other things which are more important than this. We'll talk about them later, so when, you, when you say eating, I mean, can you maybe just have a Snicker bar? You know, you give up everything else. You give up, you right. don't can eat you, anything. you have a Snicker? How about just, you, you know, you, 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 it's <laughs> long days. You can do that, but if you do this, you are right. not fasting. Because in some religions, yeah. what they mean by fasting yeah. is yeah. they'll give up, yeah, let's say, sweets. They'll say, I'll yeah. give up Twinkies for, yes. for a month or so. No, you, we're giving you, up everything. You stop, yeah, give up everything, every type of eating, every type of drinking. Okay, so we know that now Jesus, he, he fasted. We do. Moses, we know that Moses he fasted. fasted. Did Mo all the, me are we, is this all the messengers, to as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum usliyam, kama kutiba ala alladheena min qablikum, la'allakum tattakun. O you those who believe, uh, fasting was prescribed upon you as it was prescribed upon the nations before you, referring to the Christian nation and the uh, Jewish nations and the other nations, the people of the book mainly, like, like the followers of Jesus and the followers of Moses. And all those were asked to fast as we were fasting. Right? And, and unfortunately, in the other religions, it, it change it by time gotcha. so they started modifying it by allowing some food to enter and yeah. some food we muslims alhamdulillah kept it as it was prescribed on the early days that we nothing enters our stomach either drinking or 
eating yeah. during these uh, hours or this period of time. Many people know already, and we want to clear up for those that don't, that Muhammad, peace be upon him, was in a line of messengers who brought the same message, worship the one God, exactly. worship the creator, exactly. and not his creation. And Muhammad is not the founder of Islam, nor did, is Islam a new religion. It's the same way of life that was lived from the first man, Absolutely. Adam. So all, these, all we're doing is continuing the tradition yeah. of all the prophets. But yeah. the main one, like you mentioned, is worshiping the yes. one God and then establishing Absolutely. all the rules and injunctions, the so beautiful things he wants us to do. The message at the time of Moses, salam, peace be upon him, was there is no God but Almighty Allah and Moses was his messenger. You got to obey the messenger. Of course, you yeah. have to obey the messenger at the time that he was sent. Yes. And then after that came Jesus, peace be upon him. And everybody at that time, the time of Jesus who received the message of Jesus was also saying there is no good but Almighty Allah except and the messenger is Jesus. Now the difference here between the two messages is the messenger himself. Mm -hmm. It's the same message, but the one who carries the message is different. The first time was Moses, in the second case it was Jesus, and now it is Muhammad sallallahu and it will be forever Muhammad until the end of this world. It's simply, he is the last messenger. So none of them came and said, you know what, you, thou shall have no other gods except the one God, including the Father, Son, Holy Absolutely. Ghost, and, you know, worship Father, it's one the same day, the message. Son, none of this uh, other, you know, it's the same message. God with his creation. No, submit to Almighty Allah, submit to one God, to one creator, and I am his messenger. All of them said that. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's the same message. You did a wonderful show, and it's called, people can go, because you have your own, people can read about you at thedeanshow.com, you have yeah. your bio there, and the other shows that we did, and you actually elaborate on this, so someone who wants to really know the true concept of the Creator can go to thedeanshow.com, and it's called actually Father and Son. Yes, the, no, there's the show another that one, we did. Yes, yes. Father and Son. So c continuing on, now... We elaborated on that, worshiping God alone, not His creation, doing all the wonderful things that He wants us to do, and fasting is one of those things. Now, for the people from the outside looking in, they see like fasting, and so used to eating, indulging in your passion, desire, and food is a wonderful thing. Oh, it's a wonderful Drink thing. is a wonderful no, no thing. Doubt. So, said, man, these people are starving themselves. This oh, is what, what, what's the benefit here? Oh yeah, yes, yes. Of course, Allah doesn't doesn't want to torture His people. He did yeah. not create the people to torture them. In fact, when he prescribes something upon them, this is for their benefit. Now let's see some of the benefits of this fasting. Uh, first of all, we need to taste hunger. If you are always eating and you're feeding yourself, you will never have empathy and sympathy with those people who are starving, who are suffering. Yes, yes. There are millions of people and thousands of them die every day out of hunger. You just hear the news, you see them in the pictures, you may have some empathy and sympathy with them for a little time, but you really don't feel what they are feeling. Mm -hmm. So now, one benefit of fasting is to taste the hunger for some time so that you would share the money that you have, the food that you have with other people to save their lives, to make this world a better world, to live and let others live. Nice. Because if everyone is selfish and living for himself, who is going to support the poor people? And as you know, Eddie, and you talked about this in many episodes, that the gap between the rich and the poor is widening every day. Every day. Every day that right? means the possibility of the people who die every day is increasing more and more. And fasting, would, as I will explain later, it will make every Muslim save a meal per day. You can live with two uh, meals. And you can save one meal, and if this meal reaches the poor people, the people who don't have access to, to these, this food, so you will save their lives. Try to imagine how beneficial you are to this world if you save a life of a human being, not a life of a dog or a cat, a life of a human being. A human. The most precious creature on the planet is the human being. This is amazing. We'll be right back with more of the benefits of Ramadan, the blessed month, here on The Dean Show with Dr. Muhammadu Mandu. Don't go nowhere. No problem. You can take my daughter to dinner, you and my daughter and me. Let me tell you something. It's natural. That's the idea. God created it. And he created us to have a good time. Mm -hmm. We should have a good time. Only with our wives, though.
Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world, and most of the converts are women, not men. They see that the rules of Islam, instead of constraining them, the rules set them free. Back here on the Dean Show with Dr. Mohammed Mandu, and we're talking about Ramadan. It's yeah. here, just around the corner. It's around the corner. We're getting excited, and you talked about one of the benefits. There's so many. Yeah, so many. Now, for the other people outside, still starving. You, yeah, people, you, you, they were like starving yourself, but now they're starting to, you know, light bulbs on. So it makes sense. No, well, it does. I make get sense. to feel because I don't feel what it is. You know, we can talk about it all day, yeah. but, but once you walk in that other person's shoes yeah. for a little bit. You yeah. get to feel that empathy. Absolutely. Let me tell you that people who sleep from 9 p.m. until 6 p.m., they sleep almost nine hours. In some countries, the fasting period is nine hours or ten hours. So most of the people, they do fast. They, nothing happens to them. They don't die, yeah. right? So they are saving. We, we are reversing it. We are making it by day. Right? In, or in, instead of making it fasting by night. So they fast by night because they are sleeping. Now we fast intentionally and willingly because we know the benefit of this. First of all, it's obedience to Almighty Allah. Allah is the one who created you, who gave you all these blessings. He's the one who commands you to do this fasting. Mm -hmm. And He's testing you whether you're going to obey Him or to obey your desires and whims. Now, let so me this ask, is the first test. Let me ask you this before you go on. Don't lose your place. Now, some people think now, okay, you worship God. Does he like, you know, get, become a bigger God? Okay. Or does he, you know, does, is this now to, to, to amplify him as a God status? You okay. know, some people will think this. He's, he's, he's the Almighty. Yeah. He, he is not benefiting at all from our fasting, from our He don't prayer. need it. He, do, he doesn't need this it. This is for our benefit. He doesn't need it. It's for your benefit. Yes. And here are some of the benefits. First of all, you share to make this world a better place to help them and by feeling the hunger that they feel. This is one thing. The other thing is that we as human beings, as you know that, we are created from body and soul. Yes. The body we know that it nourishes on the food and the drinks. Everybody knows that. Yes. How about the soul? The soul nourishes only on divine food, which is this system that he created. Fasting, the prayer, doing pilgrimage. This system is the system that nourishes the soul to keep it on equal level with the body. Because if the body is up, so you will be a very materialistic human being. You're living just for your body, trying to satisfy all your desires, and your soul is going down. You need to keep the balance, and the balance is made by this system, the Islamic system. The five daily prayer, uh, the charity that you pay to the people, the fasting of the one month, the pilgrimage that you make, right? All these issues nourishes the soul. While you are eating and drinking, you are nourishing your body, so you keep them hand in hand, and that's why you become a balanced person, a perfect human being. There's nothing perfect, but close to perfect if you do this. If you do like this and you keep the soul down, what happens is that you become very materialistic. You try to live to satisfy your desires and forget about your soul, and this makes the corruption that you see part of the world because everybody has many desires and wants to do this and this and this and this and this. Right? Mm -hmm. So it has to be controlled. And the one who makes this system of control is the creator of your body and your soul. Now tell us, many of us are neglecting the soul. Oh, yeah? And we keep feeding the body, no, and focusing no on doubt. the flesh. On the flesh, the bone and the flesh. So tell us more. This is very, very enlightening for many of us, who, and many of our not yet Muslim, non Muslims who are out there who are listening, they see that it makes sense. But tell us some more. This is interesting. Some more of the yeah. benefits. Yeah. The, some, some other benefits. So, some other benefits. Yes, yeah. okay. Other benefits of the... When, when you make this balance, you become a stable human being. Mm -hmm. right? And thirdly, you gain taqwa. Right? You cannot control yourself unless there is a system that's made by your creator. And this system helps you control your desires. 
how many times? How can you draw the line between the soul and the body? How can you make this soul nourish? Without reading the Quran, you will never able, ever be able to tame your soul. That's the verbatim word of God, the Quran? This is the Quran, is the verbatim word of God. That by reading it and the most importantly reflecting upon it, and most importantly related to your life this is the thing that will affect you and will make you a good human being mm -hmm. it's not the music that will make you it's not watching the movie that yes you may watching the movie may entertain you for some time but it still it doesn't entertain your soul yeah. your soul can be entertained only by the words of god when you read what he asks you to do when he tells you the stories of the previous nations, you learn from it. So you need an authentic source, which is the speech of Almighty Allah that's known to us as the Quran. That's why in Ramadan, you find a great impact on the behavior of the Muslim. By the end of Ramadan, if you have a measure to measure the behavior of the Muslim, you see that it improves a lot by the end of Ramadan. Why? Because of the intensity of the worship that they make. They do the five daily prayers, they do the night prayers, they fast, and they recite the Quran intensively. And with combination of all these ibadahs together, it raises their souls to the level of their bodies. And that's why they behave so, much better than before. So it's a fact that you become Absolutely. more God conscious? Absolutely, you become more conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you are need, you feel that you are weak and you need his support. And you listen to the, the ayat that you tell. When you are so strong in body and physically, you think that you don't need any other one. You think that you are not in need of, you, you may forget about the creator of your muscles and your body. But when you are in need, you feel that you are weak. You remember, he is the one who created the water for you to drink. He's the one who created all these beautiful types of food for you. He is the one who gave you these desires, the sexual desire that you are allowed to practice with your wife. So you thank him, you need him. Now I know the benefit of this. I know this great blessing. Now, now you are trained to control yourself. Another benefit by controlling yourself from the halal and from the legal things that Allah asked you to do like eating and drinking, now you are abstaining from these things. If you, this is a, a training for you, if you reach a good level, you will be able to control yourself not to do the haram things, not to make crimes, not to exceed the limits. So this is a training period, a whole month training for your soul in order to avoid doing the illegal and the unlawful things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want you to do. So this is a training for you. And that's why I say that we are the ones who get the benefit. He doesn't benefit from it. So that makes a lot of sense. So if you can restrain yourself from doing the illicit, illegal things, the bad things that the Creator wants you to stay away from. Yes. And I, I, you can, st I mean, I'm sorry, you can stay away from the, the good things, the food and drink. The halal. So, so then you'll be able to definitely stay to away control. from the illicit, the evil things that are out there. Yes, you've, you've got enough yourself. training. Yeah, this you've is like a training 30 camp. 30 days training. This is like and a training camp, huh? Training Ramadan. Camp. A training camp. To become a, a, a better a human being. Better human being. To develop yourself, to yes. be at a higher spiritual yeah. level. Yes. Now, are there also, I've heard from many doctors, there are many sci uh, 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 medical yeah. benefits. Okay, yeah, from absolutely this. for the body. Like, like any machine in the world. Yes. Like any machine, it needs maintenance. Yeah. You need to take it to the agent, uh -huh. right? And to the dealer to make some maintenance for it. So they keep it there, they supervise it, they prevent it from running, it doesn't work, right? Yeah. For some time, and then, then refuel it and it's ready to go. The same thing that you need to relax. As your body needs to relax and sleep eight hours or whatever number of hours that's needed for the body, it relaxes, then you can get in the morning fresh, and again, you begin a new life, a new day for you. Exactly after fasting, yes, your body gets medically speaking. You need this period. This is the maintenance period for your body. And then you begin a new cycle of life, a new year after the fasting. Exactly like this. Amazing, amazing. SubhanAllah. Glory be to God. Yeah. Almighty Allah. SubhanAllah. We'll be right back with more here on The Dean Show. It comes to you the truth and the attribute of the one who created you, that he's one and alone, 
running this universe, that he doesn't become born, he doesn't die, he doesn't eat and then go to the bathroom. This is not God. What the problem is here is, yeah. it's, it's, it doesn't make sense. Who was Jesus worshiping? Because it's recorded in the Gospels. Despite all of the other issues about the Gospels, we put those aside. We just say it's mentioned there that Jesus worshiped God. One who protects us from hunger. Back here on The Dean Show, and we're talking about Ramadan. And we just mentioned some of the benefits, so many more. We could oh, talk yeah. for hours, days about this. Of course. Now, because it's coming from the most wise. No we doubt. Think, some people think they're smart, but you can't compare your intellect with the one who created you. There's no comparison. Yeah. So he's the one that revealed he's this. He's the one this who created your intellect, your brain, yeah. everything in you. Absolutely. Tell us now. We, we know that there, you know animals have long tongues, yet they can't talk. But human beings relatively have small tongues, but a lot of times they can't control them tongue. They can't, you can't get them to stop talking. Yeah. It doesn't get tired. Yeah. So is this, can this be something that can you know, take away from the fast? A lot of times we'll get indulged in backbiting. Oh, yeah. And gossiping. Know, gossiping and talking about things yeah. that, you know lying. what? Lying. Lying. Let me begin with lying. Go ahead. Yeah, that, as statistics say that an average human being during his or her lifetime makes approximately 80,000 lies. Wow. May God Almighty protect us from that. I mean, how can we control this? One of the benefits of fasting is abstaining from not just eating and drinking, but abstaining from all evil things that cause problems in the world. And talking is one of them. The more you talk, the more you make mistakes. Now, if I ask you, what's your opinion about this one and this one and this one, and you start gossiping, talking, backbiting him and backbiting her. It's going to ruin the fast. Of course, it, it will break the fast. But you've got to keep fasting. You can't stop some, now. Some people now think that they are keeping fasting, right, and they are doing something good, but their fasting is not accepted by God. Wow. What is, what is important is that it's not the fasting, is whether it's accepted or not, mm -hmm. you need to be very conscious. Is your fasting accepted or not? And you need to, need to see things that break the fast. And this is definitely one of the things that break the fast. The Prophet ﷺ explained this very fluently by saying that Allah does not, whoever does not abstain from saying lies or gossiping or any of these evil things, Allah does not need his fasting. God Almighty does not, does not need his, his fasting. You, do, if you, you continue in other words, lying? It, in other words, he should not fast if he keeps lying and gossiping. This is amazing because... Yes, the, j, j, go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, in Arabic it, it says, مَن لَمْ يَدَعْ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ أَوِ الْعَمَلَ بِهِ فَاللَّهُ لَيْسَ فِي حَاجَ فِي صِيَامِهِ So in other words, if I can explain it, whoever, whoever does not leave doing the bad things like the lying and the gossiping, right? So fasting is not beneficial, is not accepted by him. Because part of the fasting, part of the fasting is you abstain yourself from doing other evil things. Is controlling your tongue from backbiting and gossiping about people. Again, we say that it's a training for the soul. Yeah. And now try to imagine yourself that after one month you didn't make a single lie. You'll be proud of yourself. And this will encourage you to continue doing this. And this is again another benefit of fasting. That after doing a wonderful job in these 30 days, you want to continue. You want, oh, I enjoyed myself. I felt that I'm a different human being. So I want to be that better human being. That's why it's recommended to extend this fasting two days every week, the Mondays and Thursday. So this is an extension of the fast. You like the training, this intensive training in the camp, and you want to extend it. That's why it goes with you, and that's why this be, you know, it makes you a better human being mm -hmm. on the long run. So definitely stay away from gossiping, oh, no backbiting, don't. Lying, lying, all the evil any things. Any type of falsehood, any type of evil things, any negatives. In fact, this is the purpose of, one of the purposes of fasting, is to eliminate to the minimum the negative acts of human beings. So then that can carry on over. So they can carry on and open a new for age For the next the rest life. of the year. And eventually yes. you can do this for your whole life while you're yeah, alive. Absolutely. 
Thank you. We're going to have to give him a treat and continue and take a break. And hopefully, inshallah, we can have you back so we can continue on because this is the blessed month of Ramadan. Yes. And we want to talk more about it. Inshallah. So do you agree inshallah. to do some inshallah. more? Inshallah. Thank you very Salam. much. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Peace be unto you. And that was Dr. Muhammad Mandu. We know that you're excited and you want to know more because you want to get the most out of this blessed month of Ramadan. You want to develop to be a better slave to the one who created you. You want to be more God conscious. You want to eradicate all these many evil vices from your life. This is the month of Ramadan that is a training for all those who have submitted themselves entirely to the one God, the Muslims. So we're going to be talking more about Ramadan here on The Dean Show in our next episode. So sit tight. We'll see you next time. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto you. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. Welcome to the Dean Show. I'm Eddie, your host, and we are welcoming in a few days the blessed month of Ramadan. Or you might be watching this and we've already entered into it. So now we did in our last episode, we talked about Ramadan, what it is, and we talked about some of the benefits. And now in this episode, we're going to talk about some of the things you want to avoid so you can get the best out of Ramadan and some of the things that you really want to increase in so again you can get the most out of Ramadan and then all of your previous sins can be eradicated, gone, finished and you have a fresh slate, a fresh start. We'll be right back with Dr. Mohammed Mandu here on The Dean Show. Dean. Allah. There's only one God and Muhammad is his messenger Allah, la ilaha illallah Allah, there's only one God and Jesus was his messenger Allah, la ilaha illallah I don't know why I did that, maybe it's just, maybe it's just to break the ice Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much for being with us, finding the time. It's always a pleasure for people who don't know who you are, who are seeing you here on The Dean Show for the first time. We've done many shows with you in the past. They can go to thedeanshow.com. They can read your bio and see some of the previous shows. We're continuing talking about Ramadan. Yes. It's one of the pillars of Islam. Yeah. We talked about you know the other pillars of testifying that there's no God but God, Allah, and Muhammad is a slave servant and final messenger of God, Allah, and this would include all the other messengers, Jesus, Noah, Abraham, and they all call people to worship the Creator and not His creation. And one of the things that they all did, we talked about, was the fast. Fasting. Now, before um, we continue on, um, for most people, they saw part one to this show. Tell us, people are wondering, now, we talked about the benefits and what Ramadan is. Tell us, are people kind of nervous when Ramadan comes around? Are they okay. excited? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, when you go to any family, and I have visited a lot of families now in Chicago during my visit, and almost everybody is preparing himself and herself for Ramadan. Everybody talks about Ramadan. It's not like it's, they're like, man, why again I'm going to have to, you know, uh, yeah. stop eating all my food and, and, and no? Yeah, you can if you can zoom the camera in any family, uh -huh. and you will see even the young children. They're excited. Would ask their parents when is Ramadan coming. They want to fast, even as young as five or six or seven years. Although they are not asked to be fa fasting, but they like to imitate their parents. They like to feel the taste of the fasting. Yeah. And, and in fact, Islam teaches us how to train them when they are young. So when they become old, it becomes, when they become adult, it becomes easy for them to do that. Like anything, training at young age is something very important. So it's a training period for them. You will find many people, if you go to any mosque, if you go to visit, I advise uh, my viewers to visit any family uh, during Ramadan and to see how the kids are competing with each other in order to fast. Uh, yes, they are kids. They don't understand exactly that they are seeking the pleasure of Allah, but they are imitating the adults in their house. You will see lots of beautiful things. And even in the community that I live in, Virginia, you will find a lot of non-Muslims would like to come to the mosques and to share with us. So they're they, welcome. They are welcomed, of course. Any masjid that the non-Muslims, the non-Muslims want to come good, in. 
a good a, opportunity to get free dinner or free come to the uh, mosque we want to the we mosque. want the muslims to come yes. to the mosque come they, to the mosque. they would love to see you and you would see the feeling and the happiness of the muslims when they are breaking their fast every day they feel that they did something i succeeded i fasted a whole day so it's a success you see their happiness on their faces unbelievable things and a lot of non-muslims try to experience this i encourage them to come and visit the muslims and their family you can visit myself and uh -huh. my family and you can go to any mosque yeah. close by and you will see by yourself the happiness uh -huh. of the muslims not only that since the time of the prophet they used to spend the the after the end of month the, of ramadan they used to ask allah oh allah accept our good deeds in ramadan the rest of the year, the rest of the six other months, they used to ask Allah, Oh Allah, make us live until the coming Ramadan, until the next Ramadan. Oh Allah, help us to live until that, because they want to get the blessing of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. You know that one of the most great, the greatest reward of Ramadan is that we know that if you do Ramadan successfully, mm -hmm. believing that what you're doing is part of the belief in Islam, and you're doing this fasting and you know that you perhaps have some hunger and some thirst. So they, they used to spend the last six months of the year asking Allah to make them live until Ramadan in order to get the blessings and the rewards from God. Because we know that if you do well in Ramadan, if you do a wonderful job, if you abstain yourself from eating, drinking, gossiping, lying, Yes, looking at bad things, listening to bad things, all these are important things to make you a better human being. If you, in other words, it's a month of training yourself to control yourself. It's self-control. It's training for you to that. If you do this well, you will be rewarded by Allah that all your previous sins that had been done will be erased. This is how merciful the, the how one merciful God, the Allah creator is, that he will erase, so, sponge all your sins. This also tells us that he doesn't need anything from you rather he gives you and he gives you rewards for your good act yeah so he doesn't need that he doesn't benefit not, no benefit goes to allah if you fast or not however he encourages you by telling you that if you do a good job here in ramadan i will erase all your sins why is this because if you successfully control yourself for a whole month that means you have the potential to be a good human being. You have the potential to improve and to change your bad habits, to change the bad things that you acquired during your life. This is the month of a change. Tell us now one more point before I go to my next question. Even those who have some doubts about Islam, and some of them, they might have gotten the wrong impression. They think mm -hmm. Islam is about violence, and they get some misinformation. <laughs> Are even those people? I think it's an I, old story. It's an old story. Nobody believes it now. I know. It's Nobody believes the media. But even those, e, I, yeah, yeah. But those seldom, those few people that still are having some doubts and maybe they have some misnomer, no, some misinformation. Are they even welcome to come to the mosque and to to but you know the, visit the doors those of the mosque? Everybody. There is nobody sitting at the door of the mosque with, who is going to ask you, "Are you a Muslim or you're not?" Come a on Muslim. in. Come on in. We Everybody is welcome. Hi. In fact, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam encourages us to invite the non-Muslims to the mosque to see and to get and to hear the message of Islam there. To see by their own eyes and to make their own judgment. The choice is theirs. This is amazing. We're going to take a break and you heard the Sheikh. Come and visit the Muslims. We'll be right back. Please do. Show. When you look at the Bible and it says the, the earth has four corners, the, the, it, that's wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> If any Christian can point out a single unambiguous statement where Jesus can speak based on himself says that I am God, I am ready to accept Christianity.
back here on the Dean Show, and we're talking about Ramadan. This is one of the pillars of Islam. Islam is based on five pillars. Can you briefly, just for a minute, go over these five pillars and kind of summarize what Islam is, like you mentioned in our first episode, before I go to my next question, okay. please. Islam, the word Islam, linguistically, it means submission. But if you want to live in peace, submit to the guidelines and the commands that the, your creator gave you. He is the one who created you. He knows everything, every cell, how it functions in your body. So he knows very well about you. So that's why he prescribed a way of life for you. And the only thing that's needed from you is to follow this way of life. Like when you go to, for example, any uh, company or any factory in the world, yes, it has some guidelines to let you how to make this machine work. For example, if you buy a camera, a new camera, you need to see, and if you're not expert at all, you need to see how it works. So you need to see the guideline, right, or the manual. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. We don't know about ourselves very well. We need this manual, and that's why he sent the messenger with the manual. Every messenger came with a manual with him. Like Muhammad وسلم, his manual is called Quran. Like Jesus, his manual is called Injil or Bible. Like Moses, his manual was called the Torah, right? So this would guide the people. These are the guidelines that we follow. This is Islam. The main pillars of Islam can be briefed in five. They are five. The first one of them is believing, which is very important, that there's no God except Almighty Allah, except Almighty God, right? His name is, his proper name, as my name is Mamduh, his name is Allah, right? And there's, his messenger is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his last messenger. The second pillar is doing five daily prayers at different times. And the third one is do it paying charity for the poor. And the fifth one the fourth one is fasting the month of Ramadan. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala call it, this month that you see thirty days, if you compare it with three hundred almost sixty days per year, that means you are fasting almost two and a half days per month. It's a few days, two days per month mm -hmm. or three days per month. That means one day per 10 days, that means it's 10% of yeah. your life. 10% is very limited. It's yes. not 90%, it's not 80%, it's not 20%, mm -hmm. it's very limited. And the final pillar of Islam is performing pilgrimage once in your lifetime if you are capable of doing it. We talked about in our previous episode the benefits, really feeling what it is to be hungry so you can be less miserly and you can give yes, to the poor. Yes, you, you can give and, to and the we, poor. And we talked about... And, uh, and try to see how important this issue is in solving one of the biggest problems in the world nowadays that the world cannot confront is the problem of poverty or hunger or people who start from mm -hmm. the lack of uh, food and drink. So we're getting to feel this experience it. Also, we talked about the ability to refrain from many of the evil things. If you can refrain from the good things, yeah. that's a training, so that training, training for you. to stay away from all the bad things. And then, you know, medically, all the benefits, and we can go on, the list goes on about the benefits for the body of fasting. But now we want to also elaborate on, because it's very important, you're refraining from food, and you want to develop, as the Prophet, peace be upon him, he said that I have not been sent except to perfect good manners. Yes, absolutely. So now if we go back into gossiping, being rude, obnoxious to people, yes. but you're fasting, yes. you're staying away from food and drink, but now, you know, to the non-Muslim, maybe you're cursing, swearing, lying, deceiving, cheating, is your fast now Of course. Now you're accepted? fasting. Of, of course not. It's not. Not at all. Let's, let's really get the, into the this. Prophet, this is very important. The Prophet said it very clearly said that there is no need for you to fast if you cannot abstain from doing these evil things like lying and gossiping and backbiting and cheating. There is no need for you to, to torture yourself yeah. or to keep yourself away from the food. Now, because this is the, the benefit of fasting is that it helps you to abstain from these evil things. So if you cannot reach this goal, so don't, don't fast. Yeah. So now tell us, some people hear the word backbiting. Okay. This destroys homes. 
This so creates a lot of friction. Absolutely. It can divide people. So Allah, the Creator, doesn't want this. So define for some people okay. that don't know what okay. it actually do you mean backbiting? Because okay. I want to stay away from it. Backbiting, if you say something against me while I'm not present, I'm not here, so you're saying something negative against me or something even that I don't like to say. For example, I don't like you to call me such and such name. And you are using such and such name. This hurts me because I don't like it. When, in fact, Islam teaches us when you want to call even a person, call him by the best name that he likes to be called. So when you're using a bad name against me, of course, this makes me right. This makes my relationship with you is a negative relationship because I don't like to hear that name. And lots of fights happen between husband and wives and between friends because of using bad words. Using yeah. bad words in every culture is something negative. Nobody likes it. Mm -hmm. Because it has negative effects. Mm -hmm. So if you cannot control this definitely, right, it will make the society an unhealthy society to live in, an unsafe society to live in. Can, can you elaborate? Because God Almighty Allah, He also mentions in the Quran, in chapter 43, 12, about this, about backbiting, something about it's equivalent to eating the flesh of your Oh body. yeah, Islam, it's so the bad. way Islam describes it. When you backbite somebody, when you speak evil about somebody, and he is not there because if he's there he can discuss it with you he can defend himself but if he's not there right so it's as if you are backbiting him as if you are eating the flesh of your brother that is deep so deep wow who can eat the flesh of his brother his beloved brother so you are doing something so bad as if you can if you can eat the flesh of your brother so backbite people mm -hmm. otherwise because it's so bad and so deep Yes, so if you really see the, the, the importance of this issue and you want to keep away from it, don't backbite people. Don't say something negative about people behind their back. It may be less evil if you say it in front of them, so at least you give them a chance to defend themselves. This is not recommended, of yeah. course, to use any bad words. But if you are at least to be fair to give them a chance to defend themselves, but when you backbite, this is one of the major sins in Islam. Like biting, Major. because it makes the society corrupt. Yeah. It makes people hate each other. It doesn't promote love among people. It doesn't promote help and support among each other. It makes society, everybody wants to avoid the other person because they have some sort of hatred and dislike between them. And Islam tells us how to build a society that's free of all these animosities and all of these hatreds. It's called a religion of peace and it's promoting love and it's promoting peace and love so how how can it promote something against this yeah. so this is one of the benefits of islam and i hope that everybody who is listening would really care for controlling their tongues controlling their eyes controlling their ears from doing bad evil things right as much as they control yeah. their stomachs from eating and drinking so much wisdom in the traditions of the last and final message, because he's the walking Quran. No doubt. He is the one, just like Jesus' time, he was explaining the gospel, Moses was explaining the Torah, no they were doubt. the teachers. You couldn't yeah. bypass them to get the God. You, you had to listen to them because they were the teachers, they were the messengers. And the last and final message said to mankind, the problem, peace be upon him. So when he said, because some people have some confusion between backbiting and slander, but please, you're our teacher, tell us about this hadith where the Prophet ﷺ is talking about backbiting and he's asking his companions, and you know, he said, it's to talk about something about your brother that he dislikes. And they said, what if you say something that, that's cur that is not even is true it's about not. him, then that's slander. Yeah. So the difference between like, you know, because some people will say like, well, uh, if he was here, I'd say the same thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, this, it, like, even if he's here, if you say it, it's bad thing. Of course, it's very bad. If it's in his back and he's not present and he's saying it, uh, this is considered backbiting, right? Mm -hmm. And even if, if he has this quality, you're not making up this quality. You are saying that, for example, uh, he is a, a, a hot-tempered person. Yeah. And he's a hot-tempered person, really. So even if it is one of his qualities, but you said it against him in his back while he was not present, this is called backbiting. What if you say, like, I'd even say it in his face? Yeah. Oh, no. This would be, of course, a bad thing. But... If you say something and it is not in him, if you give him a name or a quality that's not in him, that's slander. 
This is the worst thing that because yeah. this is called Bukhtan, one of the biggest lies because you are lying. So both are wrong. Of this course, is worse. extremely, extremely wrong. And and you can lose your fast for that. Of course. So we of want people not to, not to lose these them. benefits of Ramadan. So yes. we got to stay away from gossiping, backbiting, and we're going to continue on here on the Dean Show, and we'll be right back with more. Stay tuned. La ilaha illallah Muhammad All of the prophets would have been labeled Muslims because this essential message was the same message, submission to the will of God. This is God talking to you directly. How can I stand behind the pulpit on Sunday morning and preach a sermon that I knew was at variance with the actual taproot of Christianity? Back here on The Dean Show with Dr. Muhammad Mandu, we're talking about Ramadan, some of the things to avoid because we want to develop our a healthy character, society. a healthy society. And at the same time, you are building up your character. Yes. So tell us now, we emphasize staying away from gossiping. Maybe some brothers coming around and say, hey, you know, uh, we got to kill some time. So maybe it's better to kill some time reading Quran, praying more, watching a lecture, watching Huda TV, Peace TV, the Dean Show. Let me show, stop maybe. you. We don't kill the time. We don't kill the time. We don't, we don't kill so anybody. So not just sitting around and say, you know, and th that's how things no, happen. We use our time effectively. Effectively. So yeah. gossiping. So using our time effectively, of course, not by gossiping, yeah. because this is ineffective use of time. Not only it affects the other person. Remember, this angel that's on the left is recording everything negative that you are saying. Yeah. And this one is recording everything positive that yeah. you are saying. And we need definitely to have a lot here, more than here. Yeah. So effective use of time to use it in something very beneficial. In fact, the Prophet ﷺ taught us that when you talk about a person, begin with the best things that, we ha that he has, the best quality that she has or he has, you talk about it, right? Don't, don't begin with any negative thing and try to avoid the negative thing and use, be very selective in the words when you talk about people. So how, how, uh, before I go to my next question, so the advice I don't want to just pick on the brothers. Brothers coming around and, and collaborating, and then they end up gossiping about some. It's so easy. It just happens like that. Yeah. You know, someone comes in and says, "So, you know, did you hear about this person?" And someone, it's like someone. Some people are fishing. Oh yeah, They're of fishing. course. They'll throw Taking something out there. Yeah. You know, and, yeah, yeah. and, and, and God Almighty. Yeah. And the yeah. next thing you know, the whole everyone, yes. it's like a can of worms. Same thing with the sisters. Of course. Some sisters will sit around. Next of thing you course. know, they're they're backbiting so and so from the masjid. Yeah. We gotta stay away. You gotta from stay this. and keep yourself busy with something effective, something beneficial. Dhikr, reciting the Quran, saying dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep yourself with something busy. Yeah. Yeah. Spread peace among people, either by saying salamu alaikum or actual peace. Give the advice for that person that's timid. Yeah. There might be three of them they started, so the other sister, she knows this is wrong, we can't this do this. Wrong. So how does she, she, should, how, she, how does she stop it? Does she walk away? Does she okay. say, sisters, No, she should sit down not, and she would say, okay. If it's already started, let's say a practical okay. side, there's five, six sisters. Okay. Four of them started, and one sister's like, man, this is gossip. Or she's nervous. She's like, man, okay. they're, they're over here backbiting. Okay. Yes. How does she stop them? Yeah. Because uh, she feels she a little nervous. Say, okay, let me say something. I remember a story that took place at the time of the Prophet. Oh, Allah bring it back to Allah and Bring them. And we'd mention a story like when, for example, one of the wives of the Prophet وسلم, uh, Aisha, radiallahu anha, when she said a word about, about uh, one of the other wives, which is Safiya. She was a short woman. And she said that she was short, but she, and she was short. So she so was short. She was short. But she shouldn't have said that. She, she should said have it in not a, said a, that. Like, in, in, in a demeaning way? Yes, in okay. a demeaning way. And the Prophet ﷺ said to her that you mentioned a word. Had this word fell into the river, it would have changed the taste of her. Wow, river. subhanAllah. This word, that she is short. And she was short. Yeah. She didn't lie. She didn't make up something. It was short. She was short. But it's so bad in that sense. Uh, but let me take so a So they can bring this up. Example. Definitely. So now people so will stop would and say. Mine. Because oh. Muslims, alhamdulillah, whenever they, see, they hear uh, something that Allah said and the Prophet said, this is the way that they remember. They become really scared and they go back and remember what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says so they feel more polite and they become yeah. go back to their good manners. Is this the same thing like uh, is it bad to get into other people's business? 
you know, oh, it's very bad to do that. This is a golden rule in Islam, whether you are fasting or not fasting, yeah. right? A golden rule is that من حسن إسلام المرء تركه ما لا يعني. It's to show that a person is a good quality of a Muslim is that he should leave out the business of others. He should not poke his nose or her nose, in, his nose. nose in the business of others. Yeah. You should not. This is not your business. Try to avoid somebody is telling you that this is not your business. I ask myself, and instead of asking you, uh, why do you have a kitchen here in your studio? <laughs> I mean, it's not my business. Yeah. It's not my business. Unless I'm asking you, I am building up my, my studio. Should I have a kitchen at, uh, close by it or something? This is something different, very polite way. But why do you have, why do you have, why, this is not my business. Why this, why that, why tell this me this, tell me that. Business. Let's it's talk more your, about deen. Yes, let's talk about deen. Islam. Islam. This Islam. is deen, this is Islam. Yeah. But uh, let me take the chance now here to remind these uh, satellite channels that they do their best in Ramadan, they bring the best movies and the most expensive, attractive episodes. And all these wonderful shows, they put all of them together in the month of Ramadan. I don't know what are these media people doing. They are trying to distract the Muslims from abstaining themselves from seeing evil things. Some media in the world do this, and I hope that they would understand the, the, the real message of this world. They, want, they say that we want to spread peace, but in fact, by doing these things, they affect the behavior of the Muslims negatively. They affect the behavior of 1.6 billion human beings. And I wish that they would listen, they would take the message very seriously, because they are part of what's happening now. There's instability in the world. There's not enough peace in the world. And I think the media is playing a negative part in this. And particularly in this Ramadan when they distract the Muslims. If they leave the Muslims yeah, to worship their God in, in the way that they used to do it without uh, external interference, I'm quite sure these people will be better human beings and this world will be a better place to live in. In, in the last minute that we have, please give some closing advices, suggestions to get the most out of Ramadan. This is a gift from Almighty Allah to you. Try to take the gift. It's so huge. Take as much as you can from this gift. It's a time that you can invest it. The best time to invest with Almighty Allah is this time. So you can get much, much, much more than other people in this Ramadan because you can do lots of things. You can do atikaf in the last 10 months, 10 days. You can do, you can wait for the uh, Laylatul Qadr, the night of power in the last 10 days, right? Because it equals 83 years of worship. So be very smart and try to allocate. Take some of your vacation in the last 10 days of Ramadan so you can do a better worship to Almighty Allah and then you have the rest of the year to do the regular things that you are doing. And what I mean by the regular things, I mean the halal things, not the haram things. May God Almighty Allah reward you again for being with us. You too as well. Assalamualaikum. Peace be with you. With you as well. Yeah. And that was Dr. Muhammad Doon giving us some great advice so we can get the most out of Ramadan. This comes around once a year and we want to get all of our sins erased so we want to be in a constant state of remembrance of the creator of the heavens and the earth we want to read more of the verbatim word of god the quran we want to watch more lectures we want to watch more of the good things take time to do more of the things that will get us closer to the creator of the heavens and earth and we talked about things to stay away from gossip getting in other people's business yes. lowering your gaze because these are the things that you don't want to just be going hungry and next thing you know, on the day of judgment, none of it gets accepted because you are rude and obnoxious, cursing, swearing, and doing immoral things, but you refrain from eating and drinking, but you forgot about developing your character and all the other things that God Almighty wants from us because He wants us to be the best human beings. And that entails leaving off all the evil things and doing all the good things that He's told us to do. So get the best and the most out of Ramadan. Keep us in your du'as, and we'll see you next time here on The Dean Show. Until then, peace be unto you.
Obey your Lord, submit to Him, avoid the danger of the major sins. Obey your Lord, repent to Him, avoid the danger of the major sins. Obey your Lord, surrender to Him, avoid the danger of the major sins. Obey your Lord, submit to Him, avoid the danger of the major sins. Stay away, stay away. All the whispers, O oh Lord, have mercy on our souls. Stay away, stay away. All the whispers, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, have mercy on our souls. Avoid the footsteps of Satan, who's plotting, scheming 24/7. Trickery, deception, falsehood, lies Anything to keep you in the firing line He'll tell you anything that you want to hear He'll be your friend when no one else is there No matter what he says, he's a stone-cold liar He only wants to keep you in the firing line Stay away, stay away. Ignore the whispers Oh Lord have mercy on our souls. Stay away, stay away. Ignore the whispers. <laughs>